Hey YouTube, um, it's another day and we're getting ready to work on Project Grizzly some more. Uh, the uh, Project Grizzly is the trailer. There's been some changes in the mentality behind this. Originally, let's see if you can see it in the background there. Well, you can see the wheel um, right there. That uh, little tiny trailer that I tore apart. Basically, I was going to scavenge it and just more or less just rebuild it and then use its registration and all that kind of stuff. But, I just, the more I messed around with it, it was just kind of like, you know, this is, I didn't even want to use the springs on it. They were so flimsy and, and stuff. And I got to looking into it. And if that's the Harbor Freight trailer, then it's only got an 800 and something pound capacity, which is probably enough for what we're doing. But I just wanted something more robust. So uh, let's take a look and see where we're at on this trailer here. Um, we've got it. Uh, it's all welded together. It's all, uh, I threw some uh, satin black paint on it, went down and got some uh, springs that are, you know, with proper shackles and the whole thing. And uh, these are uh, 1,000 pound capacity springs, so this will be a 2,000 pound combined capacity on those. Uh, today, if I don't get anything else done, what we're hoping to get done is we're going to build an axle and what we're building is a drop axle and what we're starting with is this is a piece of two inch by two inch by 0.250 wall so it's quarter inch thick and we need to the center line is here we want the center line the way the drawings work out uh, the center line actually is more or less in top with the top of the trailer so we're, I think it works out to a five inch drop and so we've got this piece I picked up at the steel yard this morning. We've got this piece here. Um, there's a lot of different ways to build a drop axle. Um, we could have done what are called like drop plates. I could have got some thick, like inch and a, one inch to about an inch and a half thick plate, uh, maybe three inches wide or something like that, and cut a square hole in it and. Uh, cut a round hole in it and then just offset it and that would work but I don't have a really good uh, I don't have a real good way of cutting through material that thick um, also it's insanely expensive because steel is sold by the pound and if I buy you know I only needed I would only need like 18 inches total I mean that would be more than I needed probably only need six inches or, you know six inches well, I need about seven inches each side, so 14 inches of material. But you know, when you go to the steel yard, you buy it in, you know, the smallest scrap they had in anything that would have worked was I think four feet, and uh, and then I'd still have to build it. So I could have had it made. I could have had, sent the drawing off to one of our uh, uh, places here that have the computer controlled uh, cutters, and they could have blown one out for me. I, but uh, then I could have, at that price, I probably could have gone out and bought a dropped axle. So what we're doing is we're going to build one. Uh, we're going to miter this tubing, and then we're going to put a, a reinforcement plate on it and that kind of stuff. A nice thick wall, so we've got, we're going to do, you know, a nice uh, bevel cut. Uh, you know, we're going to bevel the edges. We're going to have a full penetration weld all the way around, and then we're going to put a... Uh, uh, a couple of little plates on the side that'll help reinforce it it'll be strong uh, one other thing we got to do is I went down and to the the binding the tie plates they didn't have tie plates but they had the u-bolts you know which the u-bolts are what you know you have to have a plate here and they didn't have the plates where they sold the u-bolt they had the u-bolts and they had they had the right U-bolts, but they didn't have any plates for this size U-bolt. So uh, I have a piece of, this is 3 8 uh, 4 inch, 3 8 by 4 flat bar. I don't know, it's 11 inches long or something. I drew this uh, up real quick on the, on the uh, CAD, and uh, mostly just because it'll locate where I put the holes. 
and we'll uh, line that up however whichever way it goes and mark the center points and drill for uh, the tie plates so a lot of things have to happen and uh, hopefully by the end of the day we will have a drop axle on this and two wheels mounted to it and uh, first first thing I think we're going to do is we're going to uh, set up to build the axle and what we're going to do actually I need to get the bandsaw out because I got to cut the miters and the, the ends I got to set it up but then we're going to I have two wheels over here that we're going to dig out of a pile we're going to take the tires off of them and uh, build our fixture for building our drop axle so uh, let's get started All right, what I'm doing here is uh, I'm double checking what my expectations were compared to real life. And what I originally expected was that I would want my hubs on my uh, axle to be 58 and a half inches apart. And that that would give me a roughly a 58 inch center line track and that that would give me about an inch between the tire and the frame. So what I've got, I've kind of got this kind of rigged up. It's not perfect, but it's just to kind of give you an idea, because it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it's got to be, you know, in the ballpark, I guess. So got both tires set up. This thing's, a, the blade on this is an inch thick, so that's holding the, the wheel out. And I just got the wheels kind of hung on here, and I'm measuring, and I look down in there, and it's coming up almost exactly 58 and a half. So, <clears throat> It's one of those measure twice, cut once, and in this case that's really important. So now that I know that that's exactly where I want it, I can work backwards to, um, you know, how, how long I cut the axle, how, uh, you know, how, how much I got to, like the little spindles are going to get cut off a little bit, and I, so it's, you know, reverse engineering now, so we can do this, so back to work. Okay, I've been screwing around with this, and I've set the, the face of this roughly where the face of a hub would be if I set it at where I'm planning to, and um, what I'm coming up with is I may need to add a little bit of length to my um, axle. I may have to go from 58 to more like... Um, I may go ahead and go to 59, that'll give me another quarter inch, because what's happening is effectively where the, um, uh, okay, let's imagine this is the vertical part of the drop axle. Basically what happens is this is going to be, I think it works out to right about there, let me measure this. right there, which I'm all right with the clearance here, you know, between the, the frame and the, the, up, the upright. Actually, I'm not all right with that either because it's got to stick out. The spindle itself sticks out proud. We're going to have to go ahead and make this thing another, a little bit wider than originally planned. I'm okay with it. See if we went. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and add another half inch. Instead of 58 and a half, we're going to go to 59 inch. Um, a standard axle size would be 60 inches, but I think that kind of pushes me a little wider than I want to be. So, yeah, let's run with that.
of all, I had no idea that this was going to take all day. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to cover what I was, what, what's happened and where we're at and what's going to happen next um, before I start welding this. What we have is a lot of assumptions going on. So we have cut, this is the axle, these are the little uprights. We've drilled them all the way through. These are the spindle. Uh, this is a spindle that comes through. And what we've done is I dismounted two wheels, so they're just the wheel, and they're nestled in this piece of four inch, four, yeah, four inch channel. And I've got it strapped down nice and firm to this piece. I, if I, I wish that the channel was full length, but it's, it's not, and I didn't want to go out and buy one. So the first assumption is that this three inch square tube the the first assumption is this three inch square tube is straight um, I've kind of checked it it seems to be pretty straight the next assumption is that this section of channel and that section of channel are lined up with each other uh, really straight <laughs> This, in turn, gives us, that centers the hub, and that, in turn, centers the spindles, and that way we now know that what, we are, uh, what we're hoping this does is put the spindles, this spindle, and that spindle on the same center line. So then what happens is we can take our drop axle, and we can take the little uprights and the axle, and we can set them all in place where they go, and now what we're going to do is this just happened to work out the way it did, I've got a clamp so they're parallel. We've got this, this, these aren't really doing anything at the moment, but kind of gives me an indication that they're square. But what we're going to do now is it's setting where I want it. And now what we do is we tack this all together and we keep checking it. We tack, we check, we tack, we check. We make sure that it's, that as, you know, when you weld something and you tack it, uh, that heat affected zone, it shrinks a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to put a tack and we want to put a tack on the opposite side so that it kind of pulls when it shrinks it kind of shrinks it back to the direction you want it so that when you're done with all your heavy tacks it's square and straight and true and then we can weld it all up and it'll be right uh, it doesn't have to be you know perfect 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 but the closer it is the better the trailer will pull the longer the tires last, the less likely it is to do weird things down the road and all that kind of stuff. So what we're getting ready to do right now is I'm going to start, I'm going to get the welder out, we're going to power it up, and we're going to start putting tacks on this. I think I've got it pretty much where it needs to be. And then uh, as soon as I tack it all up, then we can, we can uh, start throwing the heavy welds on it and we should be able to, uh, I got to cut, I, I, I still have to make my tie, actually I have to, drill a couple of holes in the axle, and I got a couple of plates and that kind of stuff. But that's where we're at, and that's what we're gonna do right now.
apparently, I don't know when to go to bed. It's after 12.30. <laughs> I didn't know that, but anyway. Uh, drop axle. I did not realize this was going to take me all day long, but you can see here is the wheel. It fits. Okay. Cute little wheel. Tire. We've got our gap. It's a little more than I was originally wanting, but it's fine. Uh, let's walk around the other side. You can see the way it, the way it fit, and we'll talk about a few things maybe. Um, so. There's my tie plate. Uh, normally this is quarter inch stuff. This one here happens to be three eighths, which I think probably will work better because of it being the, the drop axle. Uh, you can see, you know, I put a little cap on it. We can, this is kind of tight right there, but I don't think it'll be a problem. I was originally going to put a, um, a plate here. Uh, I was going to do a three by three plate, but the problem is if I run it down into here, there wouldn't be room for it with the bolt. Uh, I, I'm pretty confident in the, in the weld though. I think it's probably strong enough. I don't think it'll be an issue. So, um, yeah, that is, that is a drop axle, oops, a drop axle on a little tiny trailer. I'd set it down on the ground to take a look at it, but it's, like I say, it's after 1230 tonight and I'll save that for tomorrow because if I do it now, I'd just have to pick it back up. So, anyway, um, the uh, next step in this project, as far as the videos are concerned, is probably going to introduce exactly where we're going with this project. We're calling it Project Grizzly. As I've, I've stated that. Uh, I will probably print out drawings of what's planned and uh, maybe discuss the history of where it came from and, and some... Uh, uh, some stuff like that. So until next time, 